hey, 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 leads us into really what our learning target is or our, if you prefer objective okay but it says how can you use base 10 blocks to model and understand division of whole numbers all right that's a great question this activity is really a hands-on okay so here we go it says there are 156 students in the Carvel middle school chorus the music director wants the students to stand with 12 students in each row for the next concert. Hmm, how many rows will there be? So immediately I kind of think to myself, you know, the operation that's going to be used to solve this problem. And I can't help but think we're talking about division here because I see that we have 156 students, okay, is kind of like our total whole amount, and that the music director wants to have the students stand with 12 students in each row. When we start hearing about each row, I'm kind of thinking we need division, especially when we want to know how many rows there's going to be. So we're going to use base 10 blocks to model the dividend, which is 156. If you happen to have any base 10 blocks out there you can use, that would be pretty cool. Okay, so B says to place two tens below the 100 to form a rectangle. Let's go ahead and do what the girl has done here, as you can see in the picture. We'll go ahead and put our 100 there we need to put two of our tens right below it like so okay and now it says how many groups of 12 does a rectangle show when you think and you look at that we have 10 going in one direction here here's 10 and then two more down below so you see 12 12 12 yeah we have ourselves 10 I would say we have 10 groups of 12 in that case. That's for the first question. However, it says how much of the dividend is not shown in this rectangle? Well, our dividend is 156. So I have 12, uh, 10 groups of 12. That makes 120. Simple little subtraction, something you could probably do mentally, but I'll go ahead and do here. We're saying 156 minus 156 minus 120. So that means 36 is not showing. To answer that second question, 36. So we've shown 120 of the dividend with the rectangle and the two tens. Because right here now we have, we actually from here to here, we have 12. And up above, we have 10. Okay, that makes our 120. So with 36 that is not showing. Now combine the remaining 10s and 1s into as many groups of 12 as possible. How many groups of 12 are there? Well, if, I'm, if I have 36 remaining, that would be like 3 10s and 6 1s. So here's 1 10, here's 2 10s, here's 3 10s. I need 6 more. So I have 1, 2, three, four, five, and six. Wow, oh, Mr. War can count. Woohoo! yeah, yeah. So how many more groups was I able to make? Well, if you look right here, you guessed it. Yeah, there's three more groups of 12 because we had 12 and then we had 10 groups. So we have three more groups here of 12. Now it says place these groups of 12 on the right side of the rectangle. I was actually looking at the picture to make a larger rectangle, which we did. The final rectangle shows how many groups of 12. Well, we determined that. We have 10 plus that 3. We have 13 groups of 12. There will be 13 rows of 12 students because we represented that dividend 156. Okie dokie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, see, do, 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 do. okay. And we're gonna move on down for some drawing conclusions. Okay, it says 
explain why you still need to make groups of 12 after step B. Let me go ahead and remind myself of step B. Step B, uh, okay, we did that and we had that 36 over. Why did we have to keep making, uh, yeah, why do we have to keep, keep making groups of 12? Well, the, the divisor was 12 and the, the value of the remaining base 10 blocks is greater than 12. Okay, we didn't have a remainder. We still had 36 remaining. Therefore, with the divisor being 12 and still having 36, we had to continue. So let's write that reasoning down. So there is there is my explanation there for that particular one. And this also puts in a point here of mathematical practice six. And mathematical practice six states that to use appropriate tools, tools strategically, it says I know when to use certain tools to help me explore and deepen my math understanding. And this is important. This is your little math toolbox. Oh, cute. Yes. And it says I know how to use math tools. I know when to use them. Of course, you can see we definitely use some, that's right, base 10 blocks to go ahead and, and solve that. All right, let's look at the next question. And the next question says, describe how you can use base 10 blocks to find the quotient 176 divided by 16. Now, it's not asking us to actually solve, just to describe. Well, we just did a problem very similar. So we're going to want to use that 100 block uh, that we had. And we'd have 100 block. And then, of course, we have 16. So that would be 16 would be 6 of the tens to make that rectangle. I would have 10 groups of 16. Okay, then I would need to determine how many were left over. And in this case, I would have 16 left over. So I would combine that rectangle and put six ones into a group of 16. And then I placed a group on the right side of the rectangle to show the 11 groups of 16. And so I'm just going to write those notes down. And there you go. That's what I basically explained about using a 100 block and six tens to make a rectangle like we did above. We did the same thing with the 12 groups of 10. But then the remaining, I would com combine that those that one ten that would be left over in the six ones into another group of 16 along the right hand side. And uh, then that would basically show 11 groups of 16, giving me, yes, back to my dividend of 176. Okay? Okie dokie. Yeah, yeah. Are we good with that? Okay, I hope so. Because I'm going to flip the page. Yes, making connections. So we have some more hands-on stuff. And now we have some of these drawings here that I, I honestly thought were a bit on the confusing side. Just got to really pay attention here when you start using these. But it says here, the, the two sets of groups of 12 that you found in the investigate are partial quotients. Okay. First, you found 10 groups of 12, and then you found three more groups of 12. Sometimes you may need to regroup before you can show a partial quotient. So let's look at that. It says you can use a quick picture to record the partial products. Okay, and here, would this have been the example of we have 12, so we have 10 groups going across here because this is the 100. So we have 10 groups and then two more 10, so that would mean 12, or I'm sorry, 10 groups of 12, giving us that 120. And then over here we had three tens and then six ones. So basically we have another group of 12, 12, and 12. So you can see that we actually end up having, in this case, we actually have 10 groups of 12 plus another three groups of 12, giving us 13 groups of 12. And that's what we did in that problem on the other side. Okay, so let's go ahead and move down. So we have divide 180 divided by 15. And it says we're going to use base 10 blocks. We can draw them out like we have here. It says record, we're going to use quick pictures. Okay, step one, model the dividend 180 as 100 a tenths. And it looks to me like that's been done. We have the 100, as you can see, and then we have, it looks like five grouped together, five tenths, and then three more tenths, giving us eight tenths. 180. Now model the first partial quotient by making a rectangle with the 100 and 5 tens. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that first. Draw the first partial quotient. You see I have my 10 and then I have my 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I have 10 groups of, that's right, of 15. So to help clarify, I'll go ahead and do this because that's my 15 going across 
and this is my 10. Okay, now that gives me 150 to kind of keep that in mind. My dividend is 180, so I'm going to have 30 left over. It says in the record section, that's up here, cross out the 100 and tens you use. Since we use that, so let's go ahead and mark that. So I used one of the hundreds, I'm going to cross that one out. And I also used five of the tens. So I'm going to go ahead and cross those out. Okay, there is the add amount right down below. By the way, the rectangle shows, we just, we just mentioned it, 10 groups of 15. Great, let's move on down. Now it says an additional groups of 15 cannot be made without regrouping. That's right, because we have three tens up here. So we're going to need to regroup one 10 as 10 ones. So in the record section, cross out the regrouped 10. So let's go ahead and cross this one out. Okay, he's being regrouped. See if I can do my circle here as 10 ones, something like that. Okay, and now it says there are now, as you can see, there are now two tens, and there's going to be that's right, 10 ones because you see the 10 ones. Still have my 30, but I'm just doing some regrouping. Let's move this down. Now it says decide how many additional groups of 15 can be made with the renaming tens and ones. The number of groups is the second partial quotient. Okay, by looking at this, I can see almost immediately I have five here, and I have another group of five, and I have one 10 here, and another 10 here. That makes another 15. So, what I can do is I could go ahead and add on two more rows. Of 15. Let me do that. Okay, I, I think you can see here I, I went ahead and I put in my two tens. And I have my two tens, and then I have my five ones on each side having 30, but I increased my 10 groups of 15 now to two more, so 12 groups of 15. So there are now 12 groups. Oops, let's try that again. 12 groups of 15. So Therefore, 180 divided by 15 will equal 12. And we have our plus 2 over together. Now it says to draw the first and second partial quotients. Oops. Well, you know what? I already did that. Okay. That first part I, you, you already saw. What I added on was my second partial quotient. We did our first one, 10 groups of 15. Our second partial quotient was two groups of 15. But we did have to regroup. Cool, huh? Yeah, I like that. Okay, so let's look at this last part here, share and show. It looks like that we uh, have an opportunity to show a little bit of independent practice sort of thing. You could try this at home first and then just put the video on pause and then see if you came up with the same answer. It does say uh, we have 143 divided by 13. Okay, like we had been doing, the first thing was is we were, we were taking the divisor, okay, and we were taking a partial quotient of 10, like 10 groups, in this case, 10 groups of 13. And it looks like that's exactly what they have started here. We have our 10, and then we have our three groups that have been three tens that were added on. So now we have 13 going up and down. That makes 10 groups of 13. I could put my 10 in there right away. There's my 10. And of course, I'll be adding something on here. Now it says, they've actually set this all up for us. Because look, at they made another group of 13. Here's our three, here's our 10. So they made one more group of 13, giving us 11 groups of 13. Now it's not asking us to do this, but could we check to see if that's correct since it showed this problem for us. We have three, one, placeholder, zero, three, one. Now we have three, we're adding, and we have four, one, 143, what do you know? Don't you just love it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we have mathematical practices explain how your model shows the quotient. Okay, it must be talking about the model up above. Yes, I would think so. That model was done for us. I would say in that case that the rectangle shows 10 groups of 15 plus 2 groups of 15 or a quotient of 12. Okay, that's my understanding, and that's kind of what I've already stated, so let me, I'll go ahead and write those notes in. So this is my understanding of that problem up above. Yeah, so I hear that wonderful music. It's the bumper music. Yeah, I kind of like that music today. Hey, you know what? That's right. You know, these videos, they just can't last forever. <laughs> Thank goodness, right? 
<laughs> hey, now, live long and prosper.